everyone, it's time for Shed Story Time. And today we're going to read, do you remember what it's called? The Baby Giant. The Smartest Giant in Town. A town is like a mini city, isn't it? And this book is by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. And Julia Donaldson is the author of The Gruffalo and lots of other great stories, isn't she? Can you tell me about this picture, Kaya? Sometimes it's really great to engage with the text before you start. So you might want to ask some questions about what the child thinks the story is about. You might like to do some guessing. I see some mouse You see some mice. And I see a fox. A fox with a long nose. And, and what's this? A big giant. A big giant. Can we see the giant? What part of his body can we see? Foot his feet and his legs. And that's a billy goat. A billy goat. Yeah, you're right. I can see his, his chin, his beard. Should we see what happens with the smartest giant in town? Mm. All right, let's have a look. You can also ask questions during the story. If it doesn't detract too much from the story or the flow of the book, you might like to ask questions about what's happening. That helps to check a child's comprehension. Do they understand what's happening in the text? Can they remember what's happened on the page before? Or are they following the story correctly? Shall we have a look? George was a giant, the scruffiest giant in town. He always wore the same pair of old brown sandals and the same old patched up gown. I wish I wasn't the scruffiest giant in town, he said sadly. But one day George noticed a new shop. It was full of smart clothes. So he brought a smart shirt, a smart pair of Jeans or trousers. Trousers is another word for pants or jeans. A smart belt. Smart. A smart stripy tie. Some smart Socks. socks with diamonds up the sides. And a pair of smart shiny shoes. shoes. Now I'm the smartest giant in town, he said proudly. He's feeling very good about himself, isn't he? George left his old clothes behind in the shop. He was about to go home when he heard a sound. On the pavement stood a giraffe who was sniffing sadly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my neck, said the giraffe. It's so very long and so very cold. I wish I had a long, warm scarf. What do you think he's going to do? The giraffe wants a scarf. What will George do? Get him a scarf. Get him a scarf. Let's check. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his stripy tie. It didn't match my socks anyway, he said, as he wound it round and round the giraffe's neck. It made a wonderful scarf. Thank you, said the giraffe. As George strode towards home, he sang to himself, My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe, but look me up and down, I'm the smartest giant in town. Does look very smart, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. George came to a river. On a boat stood a goat who was bleating loudly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sail, said the goat. It blew away in a storm. I wish I had a strong new sail for my boat. What do you think George might do? The goat needs a new sail. Hmm. Maybe he'll get a sail for him. Maybe he'll get a sail for him. Let's see if that's what he does. <gasps> With what? What did he use? His jacket. His shirt. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his new white shirt. It kept coming untucked anyway, he said, as he tied it on the mast of the goat's boat. It made a magnificent sail. Oh, thank you, said the goat. George strode on, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. 
My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. But look me up and down, I'm the smartest giant in town. Lots of lovely rhyming words in this story. George came to a tiny ruined house. Beside the house stood a white mouse with lots of baby mice. They were all squeaking. What's the matter? asked George. It's our house, squeaked the mother mouse. It burned down and now we have nowhere to live. I wish we had a nice new house. What do you think George might do? He's going to get a new house. He's going to get a new house. What would George give him to make a new house? What's George wearing that might make a good house? His pants. His pants? Or his shoes. Or his shoes. Maybe his shoes would make a good mouse house. Should we check? Mm -hmm. <gasps> you were right. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his shiny shoes. It was giving me blisters anyway, he said, as the mouse and her baby scrambled inside. The shoe made a perfect home for them. Thank you, they squeaked. George had to hop along the road now, but he didn't mind. As he hopped, he sang to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold. Giraffe. Giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a... Berry goat. Goat. My shoe is a house for a little white... Mouse. Mouse. But look me up and down, I'm the smartest giant in town. I love how you remembered all the words or all the animals from the story. Can you remember all the animals too? George came to a campsite. Beside a tent stood a fox who was crying. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sleeping bag, said the fox. I dropped it in a puddle. I wish I had a warm, dry sleeping bag. Hmm. What do you think might happen next? He's going to get a sleeping bag. What might he use this time? I wonder if you can guess. What did he take off? A sock. His sock. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his socks with diamonds up the sides. It was tickling my toes anyway, he said, as the fox snuggled into it. It made a very fine sleeping bag. Thank you, said the fox. George hopped on singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. But look me up and down, I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a big squelchy bog. Beside the bog stood a dog who was howling. What's the matter? asked George. It's this bog, said the dog. I need to get across, but I keep getting stuck in the mud. I wish there was a safe, dry path. What's he going to use to make a path? Mm, look at his body. What's on there that might make a good path? Uh, his shirt. His shirt, maybe? Oh, what did he use? His belt. His belt. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his smart new belt. It was squashing my tummy anyway, he said, as he laid it down over the bog. It made an excellent path. Thank you, said the dog. The wind started to blow, but George didn't mind. He hopped on singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. Socks. Fox and socks. My belt helped a dog who was crossing a bog. But, oh, my trousers are falling down. I'm the coldest giant in town. Suddenly, George felt sad and shivery and not at all smart. He stood on one foot and thought, I'll have to go back to the shop and buy some more clothes, he decided. He turned around and hopped all the way back to the shop. But when he got there, it was closed. Oh no, cried George. He sank down onto the doorstep and a tear ran down his nose. 
He felt as sad as all the animals he had met on his way home. Then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw a bag with something familiar poking out of the top. George took a closer look. My gown, he yelled, my dear old gown and sandals. George put them on. They felt wonderfully comfortable. I am the coziest giant in town, he cried, and he danced back home along the road. Outside his front door stood all the animals he had helped. They were carrying an enormous present. Come on, George, they said, open it. George untied the ribbon. Inside was a beautiful gold paper crown and a card. Look inside the card, George, said the animals. George put the crown on his head and opened the card. Let's see what it says. Inside it said, your tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. Your shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. Your shoe is a house for a little white mouse. mouse. One of your socks is a bed for a fox. Your belt helped a dog who was crossing a log. Pog. Close. Log rhymes too. So here is a very fine crown to go with the sandals and gown for the kindest giant in town. What a lovely story. That was a nice long one. Thank you for sitting through it with us. How kind was George giving all the animals his special new clothes? So lovely. And they appreciated it and they gave him a nice card, didn't they? Thanks for joining us today for Shared Storytime. And we look forward to reading with you again next week. Have a great week, everyone.